Uh, great college basketball game. Awesome, awesome uh, environment. Um, as I told our guys, I, I, they better appreciate this because this is, you know, it was a it was a special night to be a part of VCU basketball, and you know, ton of credit to uh, George Mason and Coach Paulson. They're a very good basketball team. Um, they're a team that could win this league for sure. And uh, you know, I, I was really proud of the way we played. I was I was, a, I was really proud of the way we executed. But uh, you know, they're a very good team, and, and that was a very good win. Say again. Just Yeah, we just you know the the big thing is we we needed to guard them individually, but also as a team, and just make it really hard. They're they're so talented, and they're vets, so they're going to make plays. They're not going to get rattled if things don't go their way early. And we just wanted to make sure all their catches were tough. They dribbled extra. Um, we didn't let them in space, and we didn't lose them. And I, I just thought multiple guys. I thought IV did a great job on Justin early in the game. Uh, I thought Marcus, and then of course PJ guarded Otis. And I thought our team helped the, those guys a lot. And then uh, other guys made made defensive plays. Uh, we had good team defense, especially in the second half. And then I thought we didn't rebound great like we did the other day, but we scrapped some out late to make it one and done, and that that really helped us. Uh, I was going to see that you know, those three balls um, go down to with Michael and um, Mikhail hit those and kind of put you guys back ahead for the time of the game. Yeah, you know, just great momentum. Yeah, you know, you know, I'm sure everyone's like they shoot too many threes. Uh, I, th I thought we shot a couple quick ones tonight, but we really moved the ball today. You know, we we had a lot of inside outside threes or as we call them one more threes. Uh, that ball got hot, and and the right guys were wide open sometimes. And uh, we got to shoot them. We got, but you got, we got to shoot them in, and we did today. You know, I'm really proud of Michael Gilmore. Um, probably not the start of the season that he wanted, but he his attitude has been unbelievable. Uh, he's so appreciative of being here. He works his butt off. He's an unbelievable teammate. He's he's positive. And he deserved a night like this, and it's going to help us as we continue to move along. Really proud. And then, you know, Mikel Sims, um, you know, he 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 buried a he buried a family member today, and uh, he shows up in uniform, and he's got his teammates back, and he makes some plays today, and thought he played very good defense. So, uh, you know, really proud of his 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 approach today. Pr pretty impressive. Um, can uh, can you comment on uh, what, what was the injury with Marcus? He was cramping. Cramping. He was cramping. And I'll say, look, PJ Bird is the second highest plus minus of the game. Just talk well, about just the job and what you said to him. Well, there's an example why you you don't quit on freshmen. Freshmen, as I always say, you know, when you're and I was one too. They don't know. They don't know. And through experience and coaching and and listening better and and just keep working at it, um, he 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 was ready to play today and he did a great job. Uh, when you when you're a freshman point guard against first place team in the league and you're plus 12 that's huge and uh, I thought he did a good job of running his team I thought he did a good job of guarding the ball he had he made it he made some plays so he was aggressive but he also uh, he did a great job as a, as a college point guard of time and score and, and, and know what's going on and, and that's a big step for him and big step for all of us and and if we get that from him down the stretch it's another weapon for us Four fouls, and then just even play as aggressive as he did. Yeah, just I, I said, I said, let it out. I said, just keep playing. Like, don't worry about it. Just keep playing, and, and some things don't go your way. And you know, the one thing about about IV is he's a momentum guy too, because he plays so downhill. And uh, a couple times we got him in space with some plays. I thought a couple times his teammates got him uh, the ball quick where he could really attack, and uh, he got you know he made some great plays, and then. You know, I thought he played. He had a couple, couple a, a couple tough calls, but I think he uh, handled it well and just kept playing. And that's what you're supposed to do when you're an upperclassman. Coach, Coach, what is it about this team that makes them respond to adversity so well? I think they really like being together. And they got each other's back. You know, you know, we talk about when we talk about being a family, you better act like a family. And when you, it doesn't mean you always, you know. Love each other, and you, you know, but you have each other's back all the time, and that's that's how a family should be, no matter what. And and uh, you know, you got 18 to 23 year olds, and I tell them if, if you take care of each other, good things are going to happen for all of us. That's just how it goes. 
and they believed that. And they were excited. They were more excited for some of their teammates and their own success today. And that's a big step, and we're going to use that going forward. Uh, you talked about it a little bit, but Michael Gilmore, obviously, again, being, being, around, being around the block and having all the experience, what did he brought kind of in the locker room, you know, for the guys? Everybody's well, players. he's a lot of fun. Uh, so, um, not that he, he's silly, he keeps things loose. He's a lot of fun, great emotion, positive, plays really hard. Plays really hard. And, um, you know, he's been through a lot, if you think about it in his college career, if you, if you, you know you know his story. He's been through a lot. So then he comes back here to VCU and tell me what I need to do, coach. You got it. And he loves it. And, you know, sometimes, you know, we've, we've had some guys playing really well. And instead of him sulking, sitting at the end of the bench, he just keeps coming, showing up every day. He shoots extra before practice, after practice. He's always in the gym. He comes back at night. He does what he's supposed to do. He's been a lot of fun. He's been, he's been great to show the younger guys, like, this is how you act when things aren't going your way. It's been great. Really proud of him. On top of that, he's a fifth-year senior, and he's, he's been basically the, the third-string center yeah. on the team. How much of a luxury is it to have a former top 100 recruit who's a fifth-year senior? You know, you can bring in as the three guy, I mean, the number three guy. Yeah, yeah. Without trouble with that. No, I mean, it's, it's huge. It's an army. I mean, that, that's what it is. And, and, uh, and he's a little different than the other two. So even though I thought his post defense was pretty good today and, and, and he scrapped a couple of rebounds and kept things alive, you, now you can stretch the defense. So now when he's out there, it allows Marcus and, and DJ and IV to get downhill more. It's, it's not as crowded as around the rim as it might be with Corey or, or Marcus Santos Silva. So that helps. And then anytime you have a big guy you can stretch the floor with that gets hot, you know, it's, it's a huge weapon. Can you talk a little bit about 21 assists and only 11? Yeah, you know, that, that was, I was going to mention that, and, and, and I missed it. I mean, that's, that's big-time basketball. That's, that's team basketball. When you get 21 assists on 26 baskets, that means they're playing together, period. And uh, we got to do that. I thought Marcus Evans did a great job of coming off ball screens when they were really heavy on the level and, and the blitzes with him of getting that thing hot and guys were sharing that ball. It was, it, it, it was great. How big is maybe some versatility? Like we talked about last Saturday, you know, getting downhill and scoring 48 points in the tank. Uh, tonight it was more, you saw more production with the three ball. So just being able to win in different ways, that's going to be big. Yeah, it, you know, so we're capable of making shots. But we also can't live on that. And we know when we get downhill, we're aggressive. We can get to the foul line and score. You know, we, we, uh, we need to continue to do that, get to the foul line 23 times, no matter any game, and maybe even more, that, that, that's huge. But when you're making some threes, you know, you're harder to guard. So you know, we could do a little bit of both. I think sometimes we do the other stuff of driving because we don't make a three. Today we, we made a couple. Can't live on it. We can't live on it. And, you know, one thing I told the guys the one time out, I know we made some threes, but we just missed two in a row. Let's get a paint touch. Let's attack because we're good at that. And Ivy went downhill and made a play. So we just got to find that balance. You know, they look at me after they make a couple, like, what are you talking about, coach? Because they, they know I'd shoot it. But, uh, you know, it's just something we got to have the great balance for. Um, obviously, you want the guys to play loose. You want them to have fun, shoot shots. Um, but with the early three-point struggles, how much did you have to adjust maybe your strategy? Like, hey, I want these guys to play loose, but they're missing a lot of threes. Oh. How, how, did you, how did you attack that? A lot. A, a lot. Um, calling, watching a lot of film as a team and, and calling guys out. That's, that's, that's a bad three. That's a bad shot. That's too quick of a three. What happened? Logging the game's really big to me. What happened in the last three possessions, guys? Uh, we turned it over. We missed two threes. Okay, the last thing we want to do is come down here, turn it over, or, or chuck a three. That balance that way. Um, and talking about keeping the ball hot and still being aggressive and, and making the defense really have to guard us. And part of that is driving and getting to the rim, getting to the free throw line. So, I had, yeah, no, I, I, without a doubt, uh, you know, I, I want our guys to have the green light and be loose, uh, but we also, got, we got, it's still, still re results oriented. I told the guys, I said, hey, you're not shooting threes. Well, look at this. And um, probably, I'm, a, I'm, I'm going to probably be a little more liberal than other coaches because I think that's, that's a hard way to guard people when teams are loose and have that green light. But we, we definitely made some adjustments. But the guys handled it really well. I, I think that's the key, the key to all of it. What can you take from tonight's game for GW on Wednesday? Well, when you win, when you win in an, eight, an A-10 game, it makes the next one bigger.
So now we got to go on the road, win the last two, and this is a really big one because it's the next one, period. And uh, for what we want to do and the, what, what we want to get in the end, all that matters is the only thing we can control, preparing for Wednesday's game at GW. It's a tough place to play, and they smacked us last year. So we, we got some work to do. Dayton, Duquesne, Mason, um, these are teams that return a ton of talent. I just, just want to get a comment on your overall sort of view of kind of the future of the Atlantic. And these are really young teams. Yeah. And just what you think. You've been around a lot. You've seen guys grow. Um, just want to get your thoughts on it. Well, what, well that, I think that's exciting because this league is going to get better. And that, that's scary too. Uh, but also a lot of fun because there's going to be some really good teams. And I think teams that can make um, noise outside of the A-10 as well. And, and as a coach, you want to be in a league like that. And VCU is, uh, is one of those. And um, you know, we have a lot of guys going to be returning as well, but we're not worried about that, Matt. We're, we're worried about getting right tomorrow and having two great days of practice. But that's an exciting thing, too, that for sure. Your team seems to be getting better at passing the ball. What's, what's making that happen? Well, I think experience, experience. Uh, just plain experience, um, just like anything, if you do it over and over again, you get better at it, you, you build better habits, you, you, have, you have some discipline on, on making the right read and making the right play. Um, look, we, the reality of it is, is we're pretty good. If we, have, if we didn't turn the ball over as much as we have this year, we'd probably have two or three less losses. And, and, and of course, shooting, shooting didn't help us at certain games, but turnovers, live ball turnovers. Uh, and I mean, I, it makes me sick when you just give the other team the ball and they go down and score. And, uh, you know, that's, they, like, guys know that's a big pet peeve. I mean, we've, we've addressed it all the time and hold our guys accountable. But it's, it's building habits and it's an experience. You know, a freshman point guard usually turns it over early in the year and gets better at it late. You know, um, guys jump up in the air early in the year to pass the ball and they learn after a while and through practice and tough practices, stop doing that because it's not working. So they don't, you know, just like, just like my kids, they don't always, always learn the first time, but sooner or later they learn. You mentioned that uh, you felt the new game yeah, was kind of the best game for the guys as far as talking in the game and kind of crying themselves and getting them through that, that variety of threes in that game. Did you, feel, did you see more of that kind of building on that today in the second half? When we're yeah, I thought we had good talk. I, I thought our defense, I thought Marcus Santos, because, you know, his, his man was out of the post a lot. He did a really good job of, of, you know, sort of directing our defense and telling people where to, where to be and calling screens out and handoffs. That was, that was huge. I thought a lot of guys, what I really liked about our guys today was late in the game, they were really about the timing the score, timing the score and talking about getting stops. They can't win if we, we don't, if they don't score, and they were doing it. And then also, uh, you know, middle of the second half, they started calling some plays with PJ in there, t helping him. That was a big step. That's what that's what leaders and upperclassmen are supposed to do. I even got like the Heisman a couple times. Like we got it, coach. <laughs> and uh, you know, I call it I got it, guys. When you have a couple guys on your team that say I got it, coach, and you really believe them, then you're getting better. And uh, I saw that today. that this could be a possible statement win for you guys considering Mason was at the top of the table. Your players, man, Gilmore and Santos said this is another day in office. Do you agree with your players? Yeah, well, I'm, I, I'm big on, yeah. I'm just big on, if you win the last league game, the next one gets bigger. I used, I, I've said it everywhere I've been, I believe that, and then you string a bunch together, they're huge. I mean, that, and so that's the fun of it. I mean, that's why we're at VCU. We win, the next one's even bigger. Um, so that, that's fun. I, I'm glad the guys have that approach uh, because that approach keeps your feet on the ground. You don't think too big of yourself. And, man, we got to get back to work because us getting back to work is, this, is our recipe to getting better and being ready for the next one. So, yeah, I, I'm glad they're thinking like that because it's the work that puts us in a position to have a chance to be successful. And if they're thinking like that and they're going to hear it from me, then we're, we're pushing, we're, you know, we're rowing in the right direction. All right, guys, have a great night.